In today's video, I'm going to show you how to take your house from this to this with just nine simple tips. If you want to see more, make sure to subscribe and follow on Twitch. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is add a decorative overhang. You see how there's no overhanging blocks? So what you're going to do to make the decorative overhang is you're going to be taking your stairs, placing them on the sides, and then going back and placing it there. And then right here when it meets the middle and take a oak block and with an oak slab on top. Look at how big of a difference that makes. Made. with just a couple more stairs if you only listen to one trick in this video this is the one to listen to add a different color roof base with the colors that i'm using birch and oak honey blocks look really good and then you can go ahead and switch all of these stairs in the middle changing these slabs to stairs the last Roof relating thing is I'm going to show you how to build a chimney. So over here, right down here, we have our kitchen going on. And obviously it looks the best to build it over your kitchen, even if you don't connect them. But I'm going to use these oak planks and we are just going to build up. I'm going to put this stair here and then we're going to continue it as a single. You need a campfire as well as trapdoors. The spruce adds a good level of contrast. We've put the stairs here and I have each stair going at different heights and then we have this one at the back. Only three tricks in and look at how good it looks. Now we're getting into more non-house things. We are going to add a path to the front of the house using similar blocks as the ones inside the house. Spruce trapdoor, these oak planks, the honeycomb block as well as the birch planks and we're going to be making the path with that as well as as horse dirt and path. You want the path to be about three blocks wide, so that's where I'm placing the blocks. But then every once in a while, you can leave a slight outlier um, just to give the path a little bit less of a perfect polished feeling. Place one extra outlier right there. Right now, I'm going in with all of the colors adding to the path, making it very pretty and also not making it too perfect. I know that some people really like to strive for perfection, but perfection isn't the goal, imperfection is. Make it winding, make it cool, but most of all, make it something that you're proud of. Now we're gonna go in with fences as well as azalea leaves to make a railing on the side. As you can see, I add small clumps of fences and then azalea leaves in between. So this is what the leaves look like. I put the leaves at an angle so then they're not really too close together. I would recommend mixing it up with the angles and the non-angles and the three or two uh, block fences. And then you can obviously mix in different leaves and azalea bushes. And look at how amazing that looks. Additionally, you can also use fences as well as chain to add some cool detail to your house or you can just crouch and place a chain as you normally would but one pixel would be floating but i i think that it looks just as good and then obviously you could go ahead and put the lantern there i think that lanterns make minecraft houses look phenomenal i think that the chains add a lot of detail personally i would make this a little bit shorter um but look at how gorgeous that looks and yeah i think that this looks Great. It's a great way to add just a little bit more detail and depth, especially with these skinnier kind of chain blocks as well as the skinnier lantern blocks because there's not too many blocks in Minecraft that are not a full block. So it's really nice to use these kinds of blocks when you have the opportunity to in your house because like I said, it really adds a bit of detail and a bit of spontaneity in the house that you wouldn't find elsewhere with other blocks. A great way to add detail on the sides of your house or to take up space would be to make barrel piles or leaf piles. So a barrel pile is exactly this. And then additionally, this also serves as mass storage. You can go ahead and put chests up there and then you can use this in tandem with leaf piles to uh, also take up a bit of space in your Minecraft build. Piles, you just kind of do the same thing. You clump them all together. They can be done however you want. You can put however many as you want. I like to have a triangular shape with them. I think that it looks better if um, it's taller at the middle and then shorter on the sides. For real life leaf pile formed, obviously there's gravity. Middle section of the pile is always taller than the sides. So when you're doing that, you can really arrange them however you want. Um, you just need to just keep on working on it until you get it to look perfect. 
um, not perfect, just the way that you want it to look. And then, yeah, we can you can leave them however you want it. Like if you're putting them out in the middle of nowhere rather than up against a house, just to keep it like shaped, like kind of like this. I think that if you are doing something like this, you can even make it a tree. You can take a log and then put the leaves on top of it to make it look like a really short tree. A couple mods do it like this. Um, Biomes of Plenty mod has short little trees like this, and I think that they're absolutely adorable. And I, I think that they should honestly be added to regular Minecraft. So this is a bee-themed house, technically. We've got the honeycomb up on the top of the roof. We've got the flowering azaleas, which serve as flowers for the bees. So what we're going to do next is a really cool trick. I'm going to show you how to make a beehive with a stone honey drip. But we're going to be taking strip spruce as well as spruce stairs and planks. So when you're making trees, you can either use oak wood or strip spruce wood. I think that spruce stairs look phenomenal with either of them, but we are actually going to go with the oak wood because I really like the way that the bark looks on the tree. So we're going to make a small custom tree. I'm just going to take it up the sides and then we're just going to continue this up a little bit further. I'm going to use a combo of jungle leaves and azalea leaves to make this tree, your tree just to look like this. So I'm going to be adding some hanging willow uh, leaves. That's what I would probably consider them to be because I, I know that willow trees do look like this. I, I like them. I think it looks phenomenal like this. If you're using fast, le I mean fancy leaves, then they're see-through. And then we're going to be taking these flowering azalea leaves to make the tree look prettier. And since I'm going to be putting bees in this tree, we obviously want to give a little something for the bees around the place. Um, so then they have a little bit of something to eat. Um, and obviously, like I said, it's it's genuinely really cute. Um, we're going to put it like that. Just don't clump them together too much. Just randomly kind of do it. Don't get into your head too much about randomness of stuff. So we're going to put the beehive just kind of here on the side of the tree. Place the bees right under the bees nest. There's a really cool trick. You need stone for this. And then you need a block of gold ore. You can also do this with deep slate. Um, but obviously you would need the deep slate gold ore in that case. So we're just going to make a small pattern around the outside. Obviously this would look better if you had a path going. So I'm just going to make this small path over here. Kind of mix in the stones. You want it to look like a little stony area um, so it blends in. You see you can put that underneath and then it kind of looks like the beehive is dripping with honey. It adds a lot of detail underneath and it, it just really makes the place feel alive. Adding on to this trick and this stone path, you can also add decorative boulders. So now we have both cobble and stone. So I'm going to make the little boulders. I personally usually take two blocks like that and then I put a combination of cobblestone stairs as well as slabs around the outside. Obviously you can do mossy cobblestone as well which I feel looks fantastic. We can also do a regular stone boulder over here. I'm just going to trace out that exact pattern that we have there and then place the stone around it. You can even go in with stone buttons for like a pebble look. You can clump them together but put the clumps very far away from each other or only put one or two and then you can also add a little bit of extra free depth with the stone pressure plates. Finally, the last tip is one that we've already have implemented. I would recommend using glass panes for windows all the way, but if you're gonna be using glass blocks, I would recommend having glass panes on the side. I think it looks cool like that. White glass panes are really cool because the border on the outside of them is invisible. You can also use light gray windows. They also look the same, but obviously they're they're not as white. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, make sure to do so now. And click here to learn how to become a better Minecraft interior builder.